Welcome to our video lecture on electrochemical cells. Our essential understanding for today is that voltaic cells convert chemical energy to electrical energy and electrolytic cells convert electrical energy to chemical energy. We'll talk about both of those kinds of cells in the upcoming slides. Our objectives are we are going to describe the movement of ions and electrons in electrochemical cells. We're going to compare and contrast those different kinds of cells, voltaic cells and electrolytic cells. And then we're going to end with just a tiny little review of the activity series. All right, so uh, voltaic cells, which are also called galvanic cells, because both of these guys kind of figured out electricity was a thing. One of them said, look, the frog's legs moved because the frogs make electricity. The other guy was like, no, look, I had this sparky thing and it made the frog's legs move. Anyhow, um, voltaic cells and galvanic cells are the same exact thing. So if I say voltaic cell or if I say galvanic cell, those are the same things. In these kinds of cells, we're going to take a chemical reaction and use that to push electrons around. Electrons moving is electricity. So we're taking a spontaneous chemical reaction and using that to push electrons, that's electricity. Electrolytic cells are the opposite. We're going to add some electricity to make a chemical reaction happen. That chemical reaction is not spontaneous. It would not happen if we were not adding that electricity. So, uh, for all electrochemical cells, for all of the electrochemical cells, both voltaic and electrolytic, oxidation is always going to happen at the anode. Reduction is always going to happen at the cathode. Anodes and cathodes are both electrodes, and these are pieces of metal that are going to carry electric charge. Always, always, the anode is where oxidation occurs, the cathode is where reduction occurs. How to remember? Croa. This is our mnemonic device to remember that the cathode is where reduction happens. Oxidation happens on the anode. Croa, always, always, always. This is the anode. This is where oxidation is occurring. This is the cathode. This is where reduction is occurring. Interestingly, in voltaic cells, the anode will be negatively charged and the cathode will be positively charged. This is easy to remember because anions are negatively charged. Ions, cathodes are positively, oops, sorry, cations are positively charged ions. So they kind of match negative and positive. Oddly, that gets flipped in electrolytic cells. So the anode where oxidation is occurring is actually the positive electrode and the cathode is negative. And we'll talk a little bit about why that is in a couple more slides. We're going to look at voltaic cells first. Remember that voltaic cells and galvanic cells, these are the same things. Voltaic, galvanic, same things. Different from electrolytic. Electrolytic cells are not the same. Galvanic and voltaic are the same things. And that's what this guy is. So this is an example of a voltaic cell also a galvanic cell. So what we have here, I have a solution of zinc something, zinc sulfate, zinc chloride, zinc something. I'm going to use in this example zinc sulfate. So the solution has zinc ions and sulfate ions floating around in the solution. We also have this solid piece of zinc metal solid zinc metal, so lots of zinc atoms here, zinc ions here. We have a wire that is going to connect the two electrodes. I have a piece of zinc here. Over here, I'm going to have a solid piece of copper. So copper atoms, neutrally charged metal atoms of copper. And then this piece of copper is in a solution of copper sulfate. So this will be copper ions and sulfate ions and copper ions and sulfate ions floating around in the solution. Good. Uh, this is the cathode. This is the anode. Remember, croa, croa, cathode is reduction. So reduction is happening over here on the cathode. Oxidation happens on the anode. So oxidation is happening here on the anode. Because zinc is more reactive than is copper, what's going to happen is zinc is more likely to give away its electrons. We're going to take those solid pieces of zinc metal and we're going to turn them into zinc ions when zinc is oxidized, losing those electrons. So these electrons are actually going to be transported through the wire. So those electrons that zinc just gave away are going to be transported through the wire. 
when this zinc metal, this atom of zinc, gives away those electrons, it turns into zinc ion, which is soluble in water. And so we're going to get more zinc ions in the solution. And that'll happen again. We get more zinc ions in the solution. This piece of metal is actually going to lose mass because some of those zinc atoms are becoming zinc ions, which are in the solution instead of being part of the electrode. So those electrons, these electrons that are traveling through the wire, they go over here to the cathode. I've got extra electrons here. Those electrons are going to attract these copper ions. The copper ions are going to be attracted to those electrons and they're going to stick together. So these electrons are going to be added to the copper ions. Copper ions are going to get those electrons. That's reduction. We're gaining electrons. These ions of copper are going to turn into solid copper atoms, which will then no longer be soluble in the water, and instead they're going to stick to the copper cathode. And this guy is going to gain mass because ions are becoming atoms and sticking to the electrode. That's opposite what's happening over here on the anode. Those pieces of zinc are actually going into the solution as ions. This guy loses mass. This guy gains the mass. Good. All right. So what also needs to happen here, because I'm losing these copper ions to the cathode, we now have more sulfate than we have copper. We have more negatively charged stuff. We have fewer positively charged things. And so we have this salt bridge. The salt bridge allows us to continue balancing out those ions so that the electrons can continue to move. This guy balances ions. We can also say that it completes the circuit. So what will happen is these sodium ions in the salt bridge will move down into this solution and they will help to balance out the sulfate that's still here, that it's imbalanced because the copper is now stuck to the cathode. On the other side, this sulfate is going to go down into the solution because we have extra zincs. I have too many cations now. We need to add some more of this anion sulfate in order to balance out the charges on this side. Good? Good. All right. So batteries are actually galvanic cells or voltaic cells. Um, sometimes we call them dry cells because we don't have those solutions uh, floating around. Instead, we have like paste. Super cool, right? So uh, what's going to happen is this cathode right here, croa, croa. So reduction is happening here on our cathode. Oxidation is happening here on the anode. Electrons are going to flow out of the anode and then into the cathode. Usually, most of our batteries, we're going to put the anode on the bottom, and then those electrons will flow into the cathode. So our zinc is the anode. This is the guy who is being oxidized. Electrons are being lost from the zinc, and then they're going around the circuit, um, and then they're going to get picked up by ammonium. Ammonium is going to be converted into ammonia when it is reduced. So our batteries often are basically just galvanic cells or voltaic cells, but those are the same things, just in a very compact form without any of those solutions. All right, so now we're going to flip over to the other kind of cell, the electrolytic cell. This is not, not the same as galvanic or voltaic cells. These guys are kind of opposites. So we're going to use electricity to force a chemical reaction to happen that would not happen spontaneously. The other kind of cell that we looked at, the galvanic voltaic cell, we used a spontaneous chemical reaction to produce electricity, that movement of electrons. The opposite is happening here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some kind of salt, some kind of ionic compound, and we are going to melt it. So we have a molten salt. In this example, we have sodium chloride. So we have molten, melted, super liquidy, hot um, sodium chloride. 
what we're going to do is we're going to add a battery. This will not work unless I add electricity. This battery is going to push electrons this way. The battery is going to force the electrons to go here. This is now a negative electrode. The sodium ions that are positively charged are going to be attracted to these negative electrons that are here. The sodium is going to pick up those electrons and we're going to get solid sodium metal because electrons are being gained. This is reduction. Remember CROA, um, cathode is reduction. And so this is our cathode. This is our cathode, which is weird because it's negatively charged. That's kind of weird. But in this instance, the cathode is negatively charged because this is where we are pushing our electrons. Those electrons are grabbed by the sodium and sodium is reduced to solid sodium metal instead of being this sodium ion. On the other side, the battery is actually pulling electrons up and away from this side, from this anode. It's the anode because, remember CROA, oxidation is happening over here. This oxidation is happening only because the battery is pulling those electrons away. This oxidation would not occur if it weren't for this battery. So the electrons are being stolen and pulled up and away. That means that this guy is left to be positively charged because we pulled away those electrons. The chloride ions that are negatively charged are attracted to this positive electrode. And when it gets there, the battery is going to grab that electron away from chloride. And chloride is going to turn into chlorine when it loses that electron. We're going to take two of them. We're going to get two electrons. That's going to turn into chlorine gas because the chlorine is diatomic. It's one of those Brinkelhoff guys. So we're going to make some chlorine gas over here. We made that solid sodium metal over here. It should feel weird. You should be wondering, wait, you're telling me that chlorine is going to lose electrons and sodium is going to get them? A halogen is going to give electrons to a metal? That's crazy sauce. You're right. It is crazy sauce. And it happens only because this battery right here makes it happen. If it were not for this battery, none of this would occur. So we're going to use that electricity, the electric energy from the battery, to force this chemical reaction to happen. Definitely kind of backwards from our galvanic, also known as voltaic cells. All right, so we're gonna practice a little bit. So um, we're gonna draw an annotated diagram of a voltaic cell composed of magnesium and silver. So we're gonna start with our two beakers of solution. So here we're going to have our magnesium nitrate. So here's my magnesium nitrate solution which means that I have magnesium floating around and I have some nitrate floating around. Into that beaker of magnesium nitrate, I'm going to put a piece of magnesium. I'm going to attach to that piece of magnesium a wire. That wire is going to be attached to a piece of, on the other side we have silver. So here's our silver metal. And then that silver metal is going to be submerged in some silver nitrate. And since, whoops, since it's aqueous, we'll have those silver ions and nitrate ions floating around separately. What else do we need? We need a salt bridge. So I'm going to add here a salt bridge. And since we have nitrates, I'm going to make my salt bridge a nitrate salt bridge. We do like sodium, so I'm going to make it a sodium nitrate salt bridge. Good? All right, so we need to state the direction of electron flow on our diagrams. Magnesium is more reactive than is sulfur. Oh my gosh, that's not sulfur, that's silver. Sorry, I saw that S. Silver. Magnesium is higher on the activity series. Silver is way down here. What that means is that magnesium is more likely to be oxidized 
And so oxidation is going to happen on this side. Remember CROA, oxidation is where the anode is. So this piece of magnesium is the anode. Oxidation is happening here. Magnesium metal is going to lose electrons and turn into magnesium ions that are aqueous and will float around in that solution. The other side, the silver, because silver is lower, it is more likely to be reduced. It's going to gain those electrons that magnesium gives away. So silver, the ion, is going to grab those electrons and turn into silver, the metal. I should add aqueous here. This guy that's floating around in the solution is going to grab the electrons from magnesium and turn into silver atoms on the electrode. Because silver is gaining electrons over here, this is reduction. This is the cathode. The cathode is going to gain mass. The anode is going to lose mass over time. And the electrons are flowing this direction. Good. Let's talk about that salt bridge super quick because we are consuming some of these silver ions. We're losing them to the cathode. We're going to have some sodium that is going to flow down and replace that silver. On the other side, we'll have nitrate flowing in to help balance out the extra magnesiums that are going to pop up as ions in the solution. And this, my friends, is our very beautiful annotated diagram of a voltaic cell. Half equations for oxidation and reduction reactions happening here. We kind of already did that. Here we've got that magnesium. This is our oxidation half reaction. That magnesium metal that's a solid is going to lose electrons and it's going to turn into magnesium ion that's aqueous dissolved in that solution. Our reduction half reaction, silver ions that are aqueous are going to grab electrons and turn into silver metal. If you don't like that we don't have matching electrons right now, you could definitely add twos to make them match. But you don't have to until you combine them into a single reaction, which this question isn't asking us to do. All right, one more little piece of practice, and then, my friends, we are done already. Looking at these three redox reactions, they want us to figure out the order of reactivity. Which one is most reactive? Which one is least reactive? Decreasing reactivity. Remember that the most reactive, kind of like magnesium when we did that lab, is going to be the one that is most likely to be oxidized. And if it's oxidized, it's losing electrons. So I look here, cadmium lost electrons. So I know that cadmium is more reactive than is nickel. I see here, nickel lost electrons. It was oxidized. So nickel is more reactive than sulfur. Oh my gosh, silver. Why do I keep saying that? <laughs> nickel and silver. Also, zinc lost electrons to cadmium, and so zinc is more reactive than is cadmium. So, cadmium is more than nickel. Zinc is more than cadmium. Zinc is more than cadmium. Cadmium is more than nickel. Nickel is more than silver. This is our order of reactivity. Of these four metals, zinc is the most, Cadmium is next, nickel is next, silver is next, last. Good? All right. So the best oxidizing agent, the thing that is reduced, the thing that is reduced the best is going to be our least reactive. Silver, but not silver the metal, silver the ion is going to be the best oxidizing agent because silver the ion is gaining the electrons, silver the metal would not want to add an electron. Yes. No. <laughs> um, so 
silver ion is the best oxidizing agent, the best reducing agent, the thing that is oxidized most easily is going to be that zinc metal. So the zinc metal is going to be the best reducing agent because it is, it is most likely to give away an electron or two. And my friends, we did it. Uh, we described the movement of ions and electrons in those electrochemical cells. We compared and contrasted voltaic cells and electrolytic cells. Remember that this one, a chemical reaction is going to produce electricity, the movement of electrons and electrolytic cells. We're going to use some electricity to force Woo, electricity to force a chemical reaction to happen. Activity series. We did that in a practice problem. All right. Well done. See you in class.